Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5.5 Nanite Skeletal Mesh video. Now, for the past couple of videos I've tested with Nanite Skeletal Meshes, I've been doing LOD0, pretty much maximum cinematics kind of quality settings. And I know it's overkill for majority of us, but I always like to start extreme and then kind of dial things down. So in this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. All right, we're gonna be doing a couple of things, but one of the things we're gonna be doing is actually comparing Nanite Skeletal Mesh to your traditional LOD or level of detail. Now, what that means is that instead of just comparing Nanite Skeletal Mesh to a high poly LOD zero skeletal mesh, we're actually gonna be using the automatic LOD system that's built in Unreal Engine 5. Now, I'm doing this because I'm getting a lot of requests from developers who actually uses a traditional LOD. So this is probably more apples to apples than the cinematic way that I've been showing here on the channel. Now, what you're looking at right now, this is Machine Gun's Japanese environment that we've kind of taken a look at here on the channel. And this is with uh, LOD turned on. Now, this is only doing auto LOD up to four. I didn't set any LOD up manually. I just use Unreal Engine 5's automatic LOD because honestly, I'm, I'm not a freaking LOD master. Uh, LODing, that's a whole different art. So now I'm going to slowly turn right because you're going to now see what is going on in the scene. Another thing that I'm doing different in this one is instead of just copying and pasting the same skeletal mesh in the scene, pretty much creating an instance, if you will, what you're looking at right now are 200 different skeletal meshes. Even though they're the same one, I actually duplicated them in a content browser and then manually dragged and dropped them in the editor in the scene. A lot of y'all wanted to see this, because before we were just kind of creating copies. So pretty much we have 200 different skeletal meshes in this small area right now. Now, like I said, this is using the Unreal Engine 5 automatic LOD, which I generated for in our case. And as you can see, we're getting about 47 to about 50 frames per second. And another crazy thing about this scene is that each and every one of these kimonos are 500,000 triangles, all right? So multiply that by 200 individual ones is what you're pretty much working with. Now, unfortunately, I can't get debug to work on a ship build. Um, and I can't package Nanite Skeletal Mesh in a debug build, so I can't show any stats. I tried doing some funky stuff. So here we go. I'm just going to walk around in here, maybe jump in a circle. And right when we get in the middle, as long as I don't get stuck, we're getting about 40 frames per second, right? I am smack dab in the middle of this right now. So... This is pretty intense, and like I said, I'm running this on a laptop with 16 gigs of VRAM, so 4090, and an Intel. I'll put the, the specs in the comments below so you can kind of gauge it. But if we kind of move around in here, and yes, every single one of them are animating, different animations. It took me forever to kind of set this up because I ran into some other issues, like um, whenever you switch from Nanite Skeletal Mesh to an automated LOD, it, I was getting crashes. So to actually set this up to compare was not easy. And I'm gonna bring uh, another point as far as why I think Nanite Skeletal Mesh is a lot faster, if you will. So here we go, walking around in here. This is uh, set at Epic scalability setting once again. And as far as this environment goes, this is no joke. This is not a plain environment. We have volumetric clouds. This is high quality, right? I'm not trying to jib out or cheat the system here. We, I put them in there with no optimization. I just put them there one by one. And this is what we're kind of going with. So, all right. So that being said, what we're going to do now is swap over to the Nanite Skeletal Mesh turned on. 
All right, so here we are again. This time around, we have Nanite Skeletal Mesh on, and there's no LOD. There's no setting up. I didn't set any LOD up. I just turned on Nanite Skeletal Mesh. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and scroll to the right. And now we're getting about 60 to 60, 60 to 62 frames per second. Same exact setup. Looks like we're dropping down to 55. Same exact setup. 200 skeletal meshes at 500 trying 500k a piece in this scene. So this we're kind of moving around and right now even in the experimental phase like highly 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 experimental this is obviously getting a little bit better FPS than just your automated LOD from Unreal Engine. Right again, I'm in smack dab in the middle in here. Again, about 55, 56, 58 frames per second in there. And I'm also recording again uh, using the same laptop. Walk around in here. All right, so it seems like there is still an FPS boost when using Nanite Skeletal Mesh versus your, you know, auto LODs, if you will. Now, you know, one can argue that somebody who actually takes time to LOD the skeletal meshes in their game or their assets or their project would probably get better frames per second than um, Nanite skeletal mesh. But I think that's what's kind of cool about this feature is that you don't have to use Nanite skeletal mesh. It's just there if you would like to use it. Because similarly with kind of like Lumen, Right? Yes, your FPS is gonna tank when using Lumen versus using big lighting. It's the same argument. It's not so much that, oh no, Nanite is gonna replace LOD. I mean, eventually it might if it gets so good, but nothing is stopping you from still using LODs for video games, obviously. Um, but even with this experimental version, it looks like I am able to squeeze a little bit more FPS. Obviously, with this with this scene that we're looking at right now, um, I'm not sure if that's going to be all around. Um, but from my testing, and I've had two scenes so far, it looks like we are getting more FPS, even though we're comparing it to an LOD uh, project or instance. So that said, what I'm going to do now is go to the project. Okay, so here we are in the actual Unreal Engine 5.5 project. And I guess let me go ahead and discuss this real quick. Now, this test was supposed to include metahumans. Um, but unfortunately, even though I got the body of the metahumans working, the face, I cannot get to work with Nanite Skeletal Mesh. But that being said, it's good news that the body is working. Uh, but whenever the face actually works with Nanite Skeletal Mesh, you bet I'm going to go ahead and try that as well. All right, so let's go to the content browser and let me show you what is going on. So like I said, all of the kimonos in this scene are all separate mesh. I duplicated them 200 times on a laptop. So you can probably imagine how that went. So that said, for me to actually create an LOD for every single one of these kimonos, I had to go to, you know, a skeletal mesh, double click it. And then I went to LOD right here. And then, you know, you can type LOD and I'll say four and then regenerate, right? And then I went ahead and duplicated them 200 times. But right now, unfortunately, there isn't any way, unless that I know of, that I can just go hold shift, right click, property matrix, and edit LODs to four and regenerate. You, I couldn't do it. So for me, I had to duplicate the first one to 200. But the problem is, what if you don't have the same exact skeletal mesh? and the LOD wasn't set up upon import. Then you're gonna have to go to every single mesh 
and set the LODs up manually, right? Because let's be honest, I've gotten projects where LODs weren't set up. <laughs> it just happens. When you think about that and with and and compare that with nanite skeletal mesh, I can highlight 200 and this enable nanite. So in a way, workflow wise, the nanite skeletal mesh, I would rather do and I would rather prefer. Now, if you're working with meta humans, the LOD is already set up, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you have a skeletal mesh, multiple skeletal meshes that you're having to set LODs for manually, then you're going to have a lot of fun. And for me, luckily, it's the same kimono. And I just set up the LOD and duplicated them 200 times. So if I go to tools and I go to audit statistics, let me just kind of show you that I didn't instance any of it. By the way, just a disclaimer, I wouldn't try this with your rig. Um, and as you can see right here, we have count. Skeletal mesh actor, one. Triangles is 450,000, right? Not 500, I think I said 500. 450,000 triangles. And that is one. One, 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 one. If I instanced it, you know, it would say something else. So the total scene is 246 million, right? So this entire level and majority of it is because of these crazy kimonos that we have that are 450K. And again, I'm not a freaking LOD master. I'm sure y'all have your tips and tricks on how to do LOD manually and things like that. Um, and you might be able to get better performance, right? But this is kind of like as an outsider looking in, this is the stuff that I'm seeing. So when I said that I was getting crashes, right? This is one of those things that you make sure you back up your project. Whenever I want this to go back to Nanite, I get a crash. From going to Nanite to LOD or LOD to Nanite, my project gets corrupted, at least for now. So whenever you're doing this in the future, make sure your project is backed up before you swap over from LOD to Nanite Skeletal Mesh. All right, so right now, these are all just with LODs, right? Now, real quick, what is an LOD? Um, if you look at your triangles right here on the top left, the further I go back at a camera, the less triangles there is, right? From our previous two tests, because I was doing cinematics, I don't do LODs when I'm rendering cinematics. So for our previous two tests, it was LOD zero the entire way. It was just high quality the entire way. But with LODs, the further we are from the camera, you can see there's only 26,000 triangles. The closer we are, you get your 450K. And again, in our scenario here, everything was pretty much close. Probably zero to LOD one. So. That's just kind of like how the whole LOD is. The last thing that I wanted to test out here was the file compression. Nanite static meshes have a crazy good amount of compression. What I mean is it takes your file size down pretty darn good from your high poly mesh. And what I wanted to find out was Will it do the same thing with nanoskeletal mesh? As of right now, I was told that whenever you cook a nanoskeletal mesh, it's actually also including the non nanoskeletal mesh. So the file size is actually bigger. But eventually, I was also told nanoskeletal mesh will be cooked by itself eventually, meaning there is a potential that the file sizes will also be compressed as good as the nanite static meshes. Now, that is huge. Because, for example, for Fortnite, we have a 400 megabyte limit on, on what we can upload before we can publish something. So if you're telling me that nanite skeletal meshes will take less space in our hard drive in the, in, in a cook project, that is fantastic freaking news.
So again, when that happens, that might be another reason for people to swap over to Nanite Skeletal Mesh. Because if you're getting slightly better FPS, you can quickly set up Nanite Skeletal Mesh that auto LODs for you. And it's going to save you space in the long run. And it's free. And it's going to work with Lumen virtual shadow maps. That's going to be a hard call for people coming from LODs. If they manage to somehow get machine learning, right? Because they're already messing with AI. MetaHuman Animator is using artificial intelligence technology. If you mix machine learning or AI with nanite skeletal meshes in the future, you know, that's pretty much, we're probably not going to see Black Myth Wukong come out because they're going to keep extending and extending. But no, I'm just joking. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I know there's some people from the game side of things that wanted to do this test because right now, obviously, they're doing LODs and they can potentially use Nanite Skeletal Mesh because it might help them in the long run. But, you know, it's always hard to convince people, especially leadership, to change to something without proof. So I'm hoping that for you all out there, this kind of helped you out as far as, you know, try to find out if it would be worth switching to or not really. Um, but I cannot wait to actually get and watch the tech talk on this, hopefully by the end of this year in Unreal Fest. Right. Hopefully we'll get 5.5 .5 at the end of this year. And that would close out this year with 5.5. .5. With that being said, I know that was a super long video, but at the same time, I got a lot of questions on this and a lot of requests. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I kind of talked about as much of it as I could. That said, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.